right, please welcome to the post uh, D session. Our first speaker is going to be Sasha Finkelstein. Uh, Sasha Finkelstein is well known for his uh, pioneering work in uh, combining disorder and correlations. And uh, he uh, is now jointly uh, in a superposition of Ryan Krish at the Weizmann Institute and at Texas A&M. He's going to tell us about thermoelectric transport in superconducting firms. Okay. Uh, thanks, Lord. Of course, it's my pleasure and honor to participate in uh, this uh, uh, event. And uh, since uh, I'm still uh, affiliated with the uh, Israel Institute, I would say the traditional uh, case when, uh, for such kind of event is to wish TV till 120. <laughs> that is, uh, and since I uh, missed uh, the event in Monday and actually did not hear. I would like to participate in 50 years after in another event <laughs> and reserve uh, in order to uh, hear just uh, what will be then. And I hope our subject and uh, we as well will be still what to do <laughs> to this moment. Okay, so here's what I'm going to uh, uh, discuss about thermoelectric transport in amorphous uh, uh, films, in particular about the uh, NERST effect. Now uh, the main uh, just, uh, uh, contributor is uh, Karen Mikhailovich, uh, one uh, popular fellow, um, uh, just after the, she was my student, so uh, and now is a postdoc in MIT, and here is some number of uh, uh, papers uh, which uh, can be used. So uh, this is a standard geometry of uh, uh, the uh, NERS coefficient, namely uh, there are two reservoirs which fix temperature to be different. That uh, result, there is a gradient of temperature and uh, just one um, uh, just uh, measure the uh, voltage across and all that happened in the presence of uh, magnetic field uh, which is perpendicular uh, to the plane. So in a sense it is, uh, uh, if one is looking from the point of view of um, general tensor of, of Anzager relations and so on, it is so to say uh, twice of diagonal effect, namely uh, you have to from uh, thermal go to uh, electric, it is one, and the other thing it is that it is going in the uh, perpendicular direction. When it is longitudinal one, then it is thermal power, and when it is transverse one, uh, then it is uh, nearest effect. And of course there is some um, reciprocal one, namely when there is electric current and uh, there is uh, the uh, just flow of heat in the perpendicular uh, direction. Now, usually, each kind of uh, uh, non-diagonal uh, just uh, transformation is accompanied by some smallness. So, in that sense, it is so to say twice uh, of the uh, of diagonal, namely from uh, just thermal to electricity, and in addition in perpendicular direction. One may expect that effect will be so to say twice small, namely it will be a product of two small. Uh, factor. And what come out is that it's appeared to be incorrect in the uh, example which we are discussing and the uh, effect appeared to be um, unexpectedly uh, strong. So I'm going to try to explain why it is so. Uh, here it is one should keep in mind for uh, it is both theoretically and uh, confirmed experimentally by measuring the, uh, the uh, angle uh, that on the first uh, cont uh, term uh, contribute, the other one uh, is uh, negligibly small. So we are talking about uh, this uh, Peltier coefficient alpha x uh, y as the main uh, contributor to the uh, nest effect. Now, the whole subject appeared to be, strange enough, uh, quite recently, and uh, because of uh, high TC superconductivity. This is an uh, own group, and uh, they measured a NERST effect and found out that effect extends far uh, beyond the um, uh, superconducting dome. So, and is looking to be, is trying to approach the uh, boundary of the pseudo gap. 
So naturally, it leads to some uh, just suggestion that it is maybe uh, just the since in the uh, here in superconducting phase, the nearest effect is due to the vortices. Then it is natural to us to expect that maybe here just in this far above the uh, region of true superconductivity, there is still something uh, just which corresponds to pairing and uh, uh, correspondingly there will be something like vortices. Now uh, there will be no uh, true superconductivity because of the absence of full coherence, uh, but something of that kind and that was uh, uh, some uh, just kind of uh, attempt to uh, explain this effect. So that was uh, strange enough uh, uh, for conventional superconductors. Uh, such measurement uh, were uh, not exist, uh, and they appear to be in response to uh, this experiment. And uh, that's how it was looking. That is the uh, 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 French group by Canobinia. And uh, um, here it is uh, magnetic field, here it is uh, uh, temperature in order to be s more similar to what is here when temperature is vertical and here is something which is controlling uh, uh, just uh, the region of where superconductivity de develops. Let's turn it uh, just 90 degrees, so here it is the same plot, here it is temperature and here it is a magnetic field which is now external parameter which limits the um, uh, domain of superconductivity. Uh, temperature is that um, Tc uh, in this conventional superconductor uh, is something like 0.4 uh, uh, Kelvin. So it is uh, very uh, just the usual uh, superconducting uh, uh, amorphous uh, film. And one can see that Nernst effect extends just in a, a region uh, just um, even much more far compared to what it was in case of high TC, namely for temperatures somewhere there, one can see the um, effect, nerve effect extends uh, something like uh, uh, 25 times uh, of TC, and for magnetic fields it extends uh, to uh, just magnetic fields, which is five uh, of uh, times of uh, uh, HC2, something. So we see that uh, the existence of the nest effect uh, uh, outside of the superconducting domain is uh, just uh, undisputable and uh, uh, it cannot be attributed to any uh, just speculation about uh, uh, just vortices outside, just too far and uh, uh, it is uh, just uh, ordinary, uh, uh, just amorphous metal and nothing else. So it was uh, just suggested also from the authors that uh, uh, superconducting fluctuation can be uh, responsible for this effect. Now here it is uh, basically what we did. Uh, we did show uh, just that in amorphous superconducting field, the contribution from fluctuations uh, extends very far uh, and can just can just can explain all that. Now, from on the theoretical from the theoretical side, it appears to be a remarkable thing, namely that one nerve controls the other nerves. Namely, the third law of thermodynamics, the nerve law, imposes a severe constraint on the um, nerve signal. The Huh? <laughs> Excellent. So to understand that is that look at this uh, reciprocal case, not what we have here, but consider this reciprocal. Now in the present, uh, just when you have uh, uh, just current, there is no heat uh, at t equals zero. And that's why uh, this inversion of that kind of thing should not exist. And that means that uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, uh, entropy disappeared at t equals zero, there is nothing what to carry uh, when you are studying uh, just this kind of uh, effect, is uh, introduce a, a severe constraint on the uh, just Nernst uh, effect. Now, uh, uh, one can uh, uh, see what we found out that 
historical study in the North Effect provide uh, just an excellent opportunity to check uh, a theory of uh, quantum kinetics. In particular, what come out is that in the scheme which we uh, did, uh, 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 calculation of the electric current in response to the gradient of temperature and calculation of the heat current in response uh, to the electric field was found independently and uh, uh, just uh, uh, it was kind uh, of checked that they indeed correspond to another relation and if one thinks that it is something uh, uh, also tautology it is not because in this case, uh, in the presence of electric field, your system maintain uh, the uh, just the average uh, translation invariance. While in the presence of the gradient of temperature, you have a homogeneous uh, system. That's why it is not just that uh, uh, the two calculations just uh, 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 or just totally uh, the same, just in word, uh, one vertex to the opposite, and so on. There are some kind of uh, differences in them, and it is quite remarkable that eventually what come out, despite of all that, is that another relation can be uh, checked. Now, um, there are uh, other group of uh, uh, people uh, who also did very similar, who used the Kubo formula and our results uh, uh, just stumbled in the same kind of uh, philosophy and uh, uh, they also found that the effect is very strong, uh, but uh, just on the level of uh, uh, just the final expression, our results uh, disagree and uh, uh, just uh, uh, in my opinion this is why th this happened is that to use Kubo formula for uh, this phenomena uh, was the wrong strategy. Anyway, we reproduced phenomenological answer obtained in, in Princeton and they not. Uh, now we get excellent agreement with the experiment without any fitting uh, parameter and my general impression is that uh, transfer, transverse transfer is much more sensitive to the uh, fluctuation phenomena compared to longitudinal one. I cannot say how general is this statement, namely is it for the model which I am discussing or it is general uh, statement. My feeling it is that it is a general statement, uh, but I cannot uh, guarantee. Okay, here it is what I say, that is how uh, feet of the experimental data are uh, looking. So this is Peltier uh, coefficient. One take the, uh, the only uh, parameter which was was TC which was taken uh, from measurement, the uh, diffusion coefficient which was also taken uh, from the data presented by experimental. After that you make your uh, theoretical uh, uh, feet and uh, here it is uh, the experiment and all that without any um, just uh, fitting parameters. Okay, now suppose we start from zero. We are in uh, Boltzmann equation, we are in methods, we just have uh, the simplest uh, equation, we write what are expression of current and uh, now we write what will be the transverse current in the presence of magnetic field and the uh, gradient of um, uh, temperature. So that will be a uh, yes, expression for the quasi-particles and it turns out that actually this uh, uh, integral is uh, zero uh, and it is known far away. Now, so now when you and this zero is because this integral uh, in under approximation of the constant density of state, which is uh, what is uh, we do in case of Fermi liquid, uh, is uh, some uh, just odd function and it's provided you with zero. So in order to save something and to get non-zero, what is uh, needed is to take density of state, for example, uh, to be uh, just not constant, to make some expansion, and that is this twice smallness which I'm talking about. One is that since it is transverse effect, you have this only the C tau, that is one. Uh, this so factor and the other one is that this uh, uh, T over the Fermi which one half is another smallest factor and it is because we are dealing with the uh, 
uh, just uh, uh, thermal um, phenomena just uh, and that's why we just uh, we need to convert uh, our um, uh, just gradient of temperature into current or oppositely uh, if you have electric field into the uh, thermal and uh, this will provide you another smallness so that is this uh, twice smallness which we absolutely natural one expect now um, so the fact that it is practically zero makes uh, studying of Nernst effect extremely favorable for studying fluctuation phenomena because when one does it in the uh, just uh, original formulation of what Slamazov and Larkin, then uh, maybe you know that it is published in some obscure uh, magazine and the reason why it was so just because the referee says that it will be never observed and that's why they have to put it in uh, some other journal and why it is so because one has to compete with the, the big data contribution with some kind of fluctuation uh, correction of course it is uh, uh, observable and it was observed uh, almost uh, uh, just uh, practically the same when it was published uh, but nevertheless uh, the effect is uh, uh, in that sense it's small namely you have a big uh, uh, constant uh, contribution and some correction which is only near the uh, transition uh, uh, has uh, just to be uh, just review itself competing with this big contribution now there is no such data contribution in the Nernst effect. That's why whatever will be found is something which will be uh, practically the final answer. And that is the reason why experiment shows that the fluctuation contribution extends to the, the temperatures which are 20 times larger than uh, the uh, TC and similar kind of uh, with magnetic field just for one reason there are just uh, uh, just what is measured is compared with zero now the other peculiarity is that it is transverse to just in uh, just uh, because of the magnetic field that's why uh, uh, if you are uh, interested in the uh, fluctuation of phenomena then uh, one should look for uh, charge mode and then uh, that is uh, uh, just what is in the um, uh, some other flanking diagram fluctuation of the uh, superconducting order uh, parameter which has charge 2e that's why they can be deflected by uh, magnetic field and that's why they give uh, large effect. Just uh, uh, I draw the diagram only for just illustration, all calculation uh, just uh, using diagram only just uh, uh, for illustration, but it is not drawing diagram and then calculating coefficient. Okay, now for collective mode, there is no such a thing like constant density of state. That's why uh, you don't have uh, something just like this uh, um, fighting of to find um, uh, uh, what will be energy dependent to save uh, this integral. That's why generally um, one may speak, they uh, expect that there are no um, uh, just general reason uh, to expect that the uh, NERD signal will vanish. Actually, it is not uh, so simple. Namely, when you do a calculation, what can come out is that this zero, which is there, uh, 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 transformed in some frequency integral. You have to calculate fluctuations. That's uh, un unavoidable. There are some uh, uh, just frequency integral and so on. And this frequency in integral in a similar way um, uh, odd, in, uh, and that's why they are trying to uh, make um, this effect to be zero. What saves the situation is that actually in the uh, disordered system, all these fluctuations are accompanied by uh, Couperon, by the scattering of uh, electrons on the impurity. So if that one was uh, superconducting fluctuation, so that is uh, what is uh, in the uh, just uh, in, in the uh, in the presence of interaction that is your superconducting fluctuation that is here now what's done here is a copper and rest scattering of the electrons and so on now it's appeared to be that um, even oddness of uh, the superconducting fluctuation and the um, 
and Cooperon are not the same, and that's why uh, just this integral, which is trying to be zero, uh, uh, appeared to be because of this mixture of different, uh, um, just even oddness, appeared to be not vanishing. And the result is that instead of what was uh, just for uh, free electrons, now for superconducting fluctuation, instead of uh, uh, if Fermi one get uh, uh, just uh, temperatures, there are no other uh, scale, and moreover, uh, instead of uh, just only the C tau, the effectiveness of turning the, um, the, the current in the perpendicular direction, one get uh, something which is uh, uh, effectively uh, just uh, the cyclotron frequency of the uh, just collective mode or diffusion, whatever. You see that there stand here two E's, the charge of the pair, and what stands here instead of one of a mass uh, for the electron stands the, uh, um, here diffusion coefficient, and that quantity omega C, uh, I guess it is uh, uh, somewhere there, uh, uh, okay, and that quantity is much larger, namely uh, the ratio of omega C to uh, capital. So this uh, cyclotron frequency for the uh, collective mode here or there, omega C to the uh, cyclotron mode of individual uh, electrons is uh, something like a Fermi L, uh, just much larger uh, uh, than one. So this is a uh, uh, big, uh, um, so altogether a big uh, factor. So altogether what one get is a strong enhancement of, uh, um, of the effect due to uh, just combination of all these factors. Now, and that is very different compared to what uh, just what one will do. For example, if we will not, one will calculate not this device of the diagonal, but ordinary one, namely if one will calculate term of thermal power, or if one calculated uh, a whole contribution, which I say are also big, but not as big as that one. Uh, namely, for all this kind of thing, one should look uh, for something in this fluctuation one, there are some standard expression which are uh, just known for people who are in the business, and that is making your this uh, vanishing of this log makes this uh, propagator to be singular, and that is how this kind of uh, uh, fluctuation or correction uh, become due to this singularity becomes uh, so big. But in addition, there is something, and that is exactly what is needed in order to fight with uh, the, uh, this uh, even oddness. Just you see that uh, what is this uh, term has, uh, it is, has some prop uh, around uh, imaginarity, namely it has omega, but it is without I, and that is uh, uh, something which is also originate from uh, the particle hall asymmetry, and for this kind of uh, thermal power and hall effect, one needed to uh, take this into consideration. While in the discussion of Peltier coefficients is, so to say, twice of diagonal, there are no reason to that, and that's why effect appeared to be in some sense giant. Okay, so how to calculate and why don't we use Kube formula and why I'm saying that to use Kube formula is a, a quite a dangerous route. The point is that uh, uh, dealing with the thermal phenomena is a, a subtle issue. When we're dealing with the ordinary um, um, just conductivity, we have external potential and we are uh, calculating what is the response on this switching on of this uh, external potential and there are <laughs> standard uh, technology which lead us uh, to the Kubo formula. What we are dealing with is that we have inhomogeneity in temperature and there are not such a, a mechanical force which is corresponding uh, to this inhomogeneity. You make your system itself uh, to be uh, just somehow uh, uh, an unknown equilibrium, but uh, just it is introduced by some boundary condition, not by uh, something like this mechanical force. That's why it is not so simple. Now, one actually may have similar situation when uh, one is dealing for ordinary uh, situation, if you have so that your density in the ends are somehow fixed and are not equal, then uh, you have 
of uh, the diffusion current. And then one can uh, just use the uh, Einstein ar argument and relate these uh, uh, two currents uh, in such a way that one will be able to find what will be the current because of diffusion, because of inhomogeneity, with the uh, current uh, just because of uh, the external force. So similar thing was done by Lattinger for studying um, the uh, uh, thermal phenomena. Namely, uh, one should uh, we have this inhomogeneity because of the uh, just gradient of temperature. So we are looking what kind of mechanical uh, force can be uh, such that if these two effects will balance each other, similar to what it happened in case of the gradients of the uh, um, uh, density and um, uh, electric field. And the answer was that, uh, which some people told me that actually it was coming back uh, to Ehrenfest and so on, but uh, um, uh, just uh, it was not indicated by Rattinger, that one should introduce uh, the, uh, some artificial gravitational field which will be measured with Hamiltonian. This gravitational field, uh, measure, weighted, whatever, stand together with your Hamiltonian. Uh, this uh, uh, gravitational field will be inhomogeneous, and that will be with mechanical force, which will be equivalent to uh, gradient of temperature, and they may together uh, just um, uh, act one against the other. And then uh, one can reproduce uh, the same kind of calculation with respect to this, so to say, mechanical force, which of course uh, just uh, not something which uh, uh, exists unless we are speaking about w uh, some uh, gravitational effects and, and so on. Um, so, and then in this way to calculate what will be the uh, heat currents in response to the gradient of this uh, gravitational field, and then uh, repeating the arguments of Einstein of uh, uh, two uh, flows which uh, uh, balance each other, one can connect the a flow uh, due to this uh, gravitational field with the flow which is due to the uh, just inhomogeneous uh, temperature and in this way uh, to connect uh, the uh, uh, just thermal coefficient with the response to this gravitational field. So in this way, Lattinger constructed the scheme how to calculate uh, the uh, thermal um, uh, phenomena. Unfortunately, what come out is that the uh, current which is needed to be used in order to calculate uh, uh, heat current is this monster. Namely, first term is looking okay. Namely, you have your ordinary current which is carrying on its back uh, just Hamiltonian. So it's quite natural um, thing. There is something about chemical potential in addition, but okay, it is somewhere there. Uh, but in addition, there are all these things, that is interaction, so you have something uh, uh, just uh, uh, gradients of uh, this uh, interaction and it is, uh, uh, makes things uh, uh, much more complicated and it is not clear uh, how to do just uh, any kind of calculation having this kind of expression. And keep in mind that it is not what one may naively think start from free and then uh, switch on uh, interaction and everything will be okay. It's from very beginning spoiled by the fact that you have additional terms which are no, not be, uh, cannot be catched in this way. Uh, is a uh, uh, quite non-trivial exer exercise. So altogether uh, it shows that the uh, thing is uh, uh, not true. I'm just here skip it is that saying that uh, if you take the simplified version, uh, you were not able to even to uh, reproduce this uh, Wiedemann Franz law. Okay, so this is the uh, second uh, point is that in addition for this kind of problem which we are discussing, this, uh, what we are discussing so far was not the end. The point is that it is known that in addition to what is coming from kinetics, one should add something which is uh, 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 originate from uh, thermodynamic. You have inhomogeneous um, 
homogeneous uh, system, gradient of temperature in the presence of magnetic field. That's why you have this diamagnetic currents, which are, because of the gradient of temperature, uh, just uh, not equivalent. That's why what you have here, uh, just non-cancellation compared to what you have usually, and magnetization, this homogeneous magnetization, provide you with the uh, transverse contribution. And that is coming from uh, thermodynamics and should be added uh, in addition, just when you do uh, calculation. So all that is uh, uh, looking to be uh, very inconvenient, and that's why uh, I decided that we will use a uh, scheme of kind of quantum kinetic approach, and we do derive um, as if, uh, the full scheme just having in mind uh, to solve this problem. Now, if you really do it naive, in a naive way, then you may say that uh, just uh, uh, you have this homogeneous uh, uh, temperature, that is your uh, uh, initial uh, just uh, state from which you are starting, but then it is extremely uh, just uh, dangerous just because you uh, prepared something from the very beginning uh, uh, to be very uh, just, uh, um, uh, just uh, uh, dangerous in the sense that uh, local tem uh, just local uh, temperature with interactions, etc., etc. You don't know what you are starting with, and that's why what is more convenient is to use this Lattinger kind of idea and to say that we will have both gradient of temperature and uh, uh, this uh, external field in such a way that your the initial state will be uh, without any current, that your uh, system will be just in that sense, uh, uh, just uh, like an Einstein um, uh, relation when these two fluxes created a gradient of temperature and uh, this mechanical film, uh, field, um, this gravitation field will cancel each other, so you have uh, just uh, a steady state that will be from what you are starting and then you switch on, uh, switch off your um, gravitational field, in that sense it will reveal appearance of the gradient of temperature and then you will cal calculate the response on this uh, switching off uh, the gradient field and it uh, gravitational field and it will provide you with the um, uh, thermal um, effect. So that is uh, what we did. Uh, now, compared to other people who do working with the uh, a quantum kinetic scheme, the main difference was that uh, what we did, we are uh, dealing with action, we integrate all uh, thermionic degrees of freedom and then extracting the expressions uh, for current using the uh, continuity equation. And then it's appeared to be a sort of miracle, <coughs> namely that uh, when you perform all that and find what is your expression uh, so just for electric current and for the heat current and so on, then it's appeared to be that it is extremely compact expression, namely that you have uh, uh, something just which is a renormalized velocity, but this uh, uh, vortex which is in case of uh, uh, electric field is just a charge, but in case of the thermal was uh, uh, this, this frequency you was uh, velocity carrying energy, and that is its frequency, and that is how much of uh, all that is in, in your system. The miracle was that uh, result is that what stands in the simplified formula here, that energy uh, carried, and that is what the addressing is by velocity and so on, and which was incorrect. Then it's appeared that correct expression is that here is your velocity and the energy which is uh, standing, it is uh, not an external one, but the one is the one which is controlling what will be your velocity. So you reach a stage when you have already what will be carried, we don't need just uh, what is this velocity is already constructed, and this velocity uh, just uh, is carrying uh, this energy, and that is uh, uh, just uh, uh, all this complication of external vertex and what was come out, etc. appear to be a sort of word identity that eventually what you come out is that that the energy not external but the one which is uh, uh, just. Uh, uh, is uh, carried uh, the and by the velocity. So that's why uh, such things like uh, 
uh, uh, Wiedemann Franz law appeared to be just automatically. You have exactly the same expression on this level, both for the current and for the uh, energy, just uh, controlled by the effective velocity, so you immediately get, you know, just in two lines, after you derive this kind of expression, that Wiedemann Franz law is indeed mm, uh, fulfilled. Now, where is this kind of effect which is uh, described here in, in this scheme? The point is that when you have uh, uh, just a gradient of temperature, your contribution are coming from two sides. One is that your green function, etc., which is uh, just uh, is uh, so each in homogeneous system, you have uh, two variables: center of mass and something which is relative. All ca true kinetics is here. All what corresponds to the local equilibrium is standing here. So these uh, terms which are coming from the local equilibrium and how the gradient of temperature influence that, that is provide you with this kind of effect just automatically. All the rest, so to say, uh, internal kinetics is sitting here. So we don't need to make some hybrid between the uh, just uh, kinetics and uh, thermodynamics. It's happened uh, um, in, in a natural way uh, by itself. Well, okay, I say that uh, there are uh, two con contributions, the one which is continuity, one is magnetization, and what is important in that story was that these two control each other, and when I say that this NERST effect is some, it is about that uh, when you're going to T goes to zero, uh, these two big contribution control each other in such a way that at t goes to uh, zero, they, they exactly cancel each other. And you see these blue islands that when you're going along the magnetic field, then effects to eventually uh, disappear. And that is the manifestation of all uh, that. Okay, um, there is some piece uh, just about uh, um, quantum phase transition. Uh, it is something which remind what is unusual. Uh, now, in this case, what is the role of parameter which control quantum phase transition is magnetic field, but the phase diagram is more complicated because magnetic field is not only control um, the superconducting domain, but it's also influence uh, superconducting fluctuations themselves. That's why you have much more rich uh, regions. So that's how the answer is, is looking. So if you are just going along the, this axis, what you get is uh, this kind of expression, and that is the fit, as I say, it is the, uh, without any fitting parameter. That is how it's working as a function of uh, temperature. You're going uh, there. Again, that expression is sum of two big contributions, which are just uh, cancel each other and leave you something only of that kind. Uh, here it is. And that is a consequence that uh, third law of thermodynamics, uh, even here, uh, just controls the situation because when you're somewhere here, you may go such a big radius, and then the fact that you're somewhere there, where t equals zero, is still will be controlling what is going on here, and that's how this constellation happened. And uh, just, uh, uh, just when we are dealing with the magnetic field, you have some other. Now we'll skip. Uh, uh, all these things about uh, the, the most interesting thing, what is going on here? We see that this is, so to say, quantum region. And the answer is that what happened here is that you have uh, Peltier coefficient, which is, in a sense, uh, constant. It does not contain neither temperature, neither magnetic field, uh, just not uh, something uh, which is quite different. Now, whole effect, there are no uh, time. Here it is what I showed in the very beginning, namely that when you have somewhere here and go on magnetic field, that is your uh, uh, thing. Now, if you take something trivial one, namely take uh, the expression and just modify uh, Tc as a function of magnetic field, you will get something of that. So this part can be described as this tri trivial way, but, but you will not get non-monotonic behavior. That is how this thing, I say that one should uh, uh, study fluctuation effect in all transfers. That is how, in case of the hole. So, uh, more or less uh, done. That is uh, my young uh, uh, 
uh, course courses, so Karen uh, did this work. Now together with Konstantin uh, uh, Tikhonov, that was about uh, whole. Now George Schwitter uh, is also uh, participating in the Sam of Earth. And actually together with him, this is uh, for European people, keep in mind. It is a young uh, theoretician who is now in Germany doing his habilitation uh, in the process, and it is a theoretician of extraordinary str uh, uh, strength. So uh, together with him, we basically developed what I did, I don't know, uh, uh, 30 years ago, uh, about disorder and interaction for ordinary transport, how it should be modified uh, for the uh, thermal transport, including the uh, uh, regionalization group, etc. Okay, to conclusion. So, uh, we developed scheme, which in my opinion should be an uh, alternative for the Cuba, at least for studying thermal phenomena. Now, uh, this um, people who use Cuba formula in principle, uh, I think it is also doable, but uh, it is much more cumbersome, and uh, they use the simplified form of the Cuba formula. Um, now, uh, that is this remarkable expression which makes things extremely simple and makes this Wiedemann for France law uh, just almost a toy. Uh, and what we found out that we calculate independently uh, the two both effect thermal in the presence of electric fuel, that is translation invariant uh, calculation, and electric fuel in the presence of gradient when you have this kind of uh, inhomogeneity and check uh, by this independent calculation that they uh, control, uh, correspond to uh, um, Anzager. That is about general. About the last effect uh, is that, as I say, third law of thermodynamics controls the strength of the nerve surface. So this zero is manifestation of the uh, uh, third law, namely that the nerve effect should disappear when you are uh, just, so to say, at low temperature, because when you are far away uh, from the uh, superconducting domain, you are as if you are at uh, uh, low temperature. So that is uh, this kind of manifestation. And uh, uh, what I would say is that now situation somewhat changed, namely if original question was why in high TC this domain outside the uh, superconductor when the nerve effect is strong is so large, now I would say that why it is so limited. Here it is extended uh, uh, 10 times in temperature, 20 and uh, at least uh, 5 times in magnetic field. And if you want to think that maybe it is because uh, D wave and uh, S wave will be very different from the point of your fluctuation theory, uh, they are the same. It is of not to say that I understand what is going on in high TC, peculiarity of high TC, uh, we are just sitting here, but if you take what is fluctuation theory in D wave and just reproduce what will be, you are also supposed to get uh, in this kind of enormous effect. Thank you for your attention, and again, Rama, it was a pleasure. diagram in the capital omega CT plane. Yeah, this N1. So, can you explain the red lines that went by very fast? Okay, so, uh, which, uh, All suppose, uh, suppose that one. What you're saying is the following. Usually, you're saying that it is yours, where it is. Yeah, uh, I'm looking for standard phase, ah, here it is. That is usual phase diagram. When you're saying that is yours, uh, just uh, uh, ordered phase, that is uh, some uh, uh, just disordered quantum disorder. that is the region of uh, uh, quantum criticality, that fluctuation are so strong that they completely change the, uh, just the physics and so on, and that is thermal disorder. Now what we have here is similar and not, namely, first of all, uh, what all is done here is just Gaussian fluctuation. So what we are calling it a quantum, this kind of region, it is not when just you need to sum and sum this fluctuation in order to completely change the properties of yours, uh, uh, let's say, quasi-particle and so on. That is minimal thing, Gaussian fluctuation. But nevertheless, it's appeared to be that you have something similar and uh, rich enough. So first, but 
Now, to be honest, it is not the same as that one. It is Gaussian filtration. Here it is non-Gaussian. Now, now, next thing it is Ricci because what is going here is that uh, this parameter which you have here is controlling the boundary of this uh, phase diagram, but not controlling f just fluctuation by itself. Now, what happened here, that in addition to this boundary, what we have in here, that you also influence the uh, uh, strength of your fluctuation in a way that uh, when you're saying that that one is one over log t over tc, and here, you, in a usual way, you will say dk square minus i on the that is your fluctuation. Now, in the presence of magnetic field, what you have here is uh, that uh, you have something like this omega c, just n plus one half, etc. So what happens is that you are not only uh, just influencing uh, where is the boundary of the transition, so uh, this kind of thing, but you also so will influence what will be the spectrum of your fluctuation. And that is this line, which is here. So this boundary, that one is similar to what you have here, but that one is telling you, you know, whether you have something when, okay, in addition here, minus i omega, when your frequency, suppose you are doing in thermodynamics, then it is omega n, when your frequency is larger than that or smaller, whether you're in high temperature regime or whether you're in quantum. So this line, separates uh, this thing, but it's telling you that that is your quantum regime, and that is when you are may uh, treat uh, thermal fluctuation. For example, here what you have here, it is purely thermal fluctuation, but of very singular type, which are related to that. That is provide you this kind of anomalous contribution, which I show. And in addition, you have all this kind of thing when you just compare what is bigger, or just uh, uh, that kind of thing compared to uh, frequency. Instead of frequencies, there will be temperature. The other way around, and so on. So, those kind of lines which are, uh, one originate from this uh, point, and the other one originate from that kind of thing, where they have somehow meet. So, you have something more rich because not only position of that kind of thing, but also spectrum of your fluctuation is also influenced by this uh, parameter. And that's why your diagram appears to be much more rich. So, that is the uh, uh, more and then one can just, uh, for in particular, this, uh, this beautiful thing is that despite that it is Gaussian fluctuation and so on and so on, here in this corner you have uh, just uh, uh, this kind of singular uh, contribution, so H over HC, so that is when it is uh, just uh, singular, and it is, uh, you see this temperature, it is thermal fluctuation of this single fluctuation in this corner, which provides you with this uh, 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 just extremely singular uh, uh, contribution in this way. Now, you pay attention, it is neither proportional uh, temperature as it uh, one, uh, sorry, it is not here, it is this one. Temperature was the previous one when you are saying what will be here and that it should disappear when temperature would be because of the next uh, third law. But what you have here is the question mark, what to expect here? And that is the answer, that uh, what will come out we don't have neither this H nor the T, some mm, thing. Okay, so that is about this diagram. Um, I have a question. So this is something about, uh, you mentioned in the end you have worked on the Hall resistance, etc. And c could you tell me how it behaves as a function of temperature and in particular how does it differ from the old story we know about weak localization or Altshuler, I don't know, uh, corrections to Hall resistance and here you have in addition Cooper pair fluctuations. Okay. Um, it is like that. Hall resistance or Hall conductivity, okay. and it is different thing. So, um, I'll show you a of correction. Do not provide to the Hall conductivity. As a result, since there are uh, there are correction to the uh, longitudinal, there should will be a correction to the Hall coefficient. So, 
vice versa. When you're looking for the uh, weak localization correction, then we do have both, and they are in such a way that do, they do not provide a uh, contribution to uh, this one. So that is one part of the story. Uh, now, what we are discussing here is uh, just how do we behave uh, in uh, just nearby the uh, 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 transition when you have uh, this kind of uh, uh, singular fluctuation, what they will contribute of this kind, what can we do? We are not the first. I'll show you in Larkin, sorry, Aronov, Larkin, Kikami did this kind of thing. And uh, uh, that kind of fit, which they did not do here, uh, that is measurement by Kapitolnik. This kind of fit, which Karen uh, did following some expression and some experience of what we did uh, uh, in the maps, is uh, just quite a crude one. It is in the spirit, uh, here it is, it is in the spirit of that one. So take some minimal expression, modify the TC with magnetic field, and we put it and see what will come out. And basically, it was uh, the purpose was to see whether this kind of thing is uh, uh, reasonable or not. And uh, from that point of view, uh, it is quite reasonable. So, in addition from something, we found out that. Uh, uh, there is some additional contribution which these people overlook, but doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I was wondering whether uh, you looked at market terms and the density of state calculating the uh, corrections because you didn't mention them. Uh, I didn't mention because calculation was not the dramatic one, not in the sense that uh, because we say. The dramatic and so on, it is natural, and you do have a Kubo formula, and you say, but I don't work with Kubo formula. Yeah. I only do certain calculation, and then I see that is similar to what is going on when I will do. So what is going on here is that uh, uh, major contribution comes also with all of them that are equivalent of all of them, again, it, because it was not diagrammatic, but you do some mm -hmm. uh, calculation, and then you uh, look on, on your expression and say, okay, that one corresponds uh, uh, to this process, that one corresponds to that one. So, this, so that's why illustration of calculation was done uh, diagrammatically, because I'm used to, to this language. But, uh, so the answer is, a major contributor, uh, Thompson is uh, appeared to be for this kind of uh, thermal of this nurse. Not uh, important, what are important as a matter of marking and uh, uh, density of state. And among the density of state, there are, so to say, uh, three cooperon uh, contribution, two cooperon contribution, and there are uh, different, namely that in certain region uh, only uh, the three cooperon contribution. All that is quite conventional. The point is that this gentleman. Uh, Konstantin Tikhonov, uh, in this kind of uh, work which we are uh, doing and so on, uh, recalculate all that using uh, other gauge. And it's appeared to be that all this separation, what term, etc., etc., depends very strongly on the gauge. So what we, this language of diagram and so on is not universal. What happens is that when you choose, uh, change the gauge, there is reshuffling. And in particular, one can calculate uh, uh, the same kind of thing and then find out that some of this contribution not exists. Of course, such a fundamental thing like uh, some other flag is un just unbeatable, but actually uh, it happens that m many other contributions wish to join it. So that's, but anyway, the answer is that uh, all that was done, we can recognize what is what, but in the conventional language, uh, Mackie Thompson appeared to be not important. What, what was important was uh, density of states and uh, some other class. So even in the quantum critical point, the Mackie Thompson diagram was not important. Uh, do you have an understanding of why uh, the interference terms are not important? It's quite different. No, I mean, it's, it is the same kind of thing, but uh, uh, what, ha what happened is that you see, uh, you have this uh, another expression because of the, uh, this energy integration. And this energy integration uh, uh, just uh, to change uh, the structure of the expression. So it's appeared to be that uh, uh, for some uh, 
non fundamentalism uh, this is uh, what it comes in a way in a sense is a scattering of quasi particles on this fluctuation now it may be natural that it doesn't uh, uh, did not reveal itself because I say that uh, for ordinary scattering and, and, and so on, uh, just effect should disappear because of this uh, even oddness uh, integral. So when you are not doing this kind of thing, then uh, this uh, uh, the structure of this uh, frequencies will be different, and then it is so. That is maybe a uh, reasonable ex explanation. Uh, very short one. You mentioned that uh, the transverse parameters are more sensitive to fluctuations than the longitudinal parameters, so which means that the feedback coefficient will not be as sensitive <coughs> uh, compared to the noise effect. Um, any reason why I really believe in that? No, you see, when it is twice transfer, the reason is obvious. You even don't think you need to this uh, uh, particle hole is in Now, for example, in case of hole, what happens is, is that uh, uh, for longitudinal correction, you have uh, uh, this first order of divergence, one over the For the uh, hole, you have squared. So even for such a simple thing like uh, uh, correction to the whole conductivity, you have more singular uh, expression. And by the way, of opposite sign, that is partially the answer uh, to use in, in, a, in, a, to the, in a, namely, main contribution for whole comes from the density of state. The result has opposite sign. So all these kind of things are coming uh, between uh, each other, and it is not clear that why one can say. Now about Zedek, I don't know this, but it is also, in a sense, uh, just uh, non-diagonal, just but in, in some other sense. So I would say that uh, it looks like from this experience that one should be uh, indeed careful about, uh, especially for the quantities which uh, have a tendency to vanish in, in fermi liquid level, because you have, in a sense, zero with what to compare. So. Velocity vertex, uh, can we actually uh, uh, know what it is for, let us say, strong correlation? I mean, how do you, do you actually, uh, what, do you find it diagrammatically by this, uh, this box diagram and so on, and you can do it for any U, any of interaction? It's in reasonable uh, uh, just to clarify it. Um, it's like this. Uh, suppose you are in, it depends on, uh, the, on the problem. Suppose you are studying uh, Wiedemann Franz law. Then you do know that you need to introduce for the velocity Fermi liquid expression. So that is uh, 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 what will be here if I will come to uh, this point uh, that you need to hear that. Uh, some block, and we are, of course, not trying to calculate. We are taking f from phenomenology or whatever microscopic and put it in, and after that, compare what will come out for thermal and for this. So that is it. But for what we did here, velocity is, in a sense, uh, um, uh, uh, just should be defined itself, namely. You uh, introduce this fluctuation correction. That is your self energy derivative. Derivative of this self energy is your generalized velocity. So what stands here is this kind of expression. And you need to find all that in, in a sense self-consistently maybe, maybe that you introduce such a thing and then you come out what will be. So uh, just that thing is in, within the calculation. Your fixed what will be your accuracy of calculation that you calculate in this case Gaussian fluctuation okay that means that for this uh, derivative of self energy with respect to momentum which is generalized velocity takes the same kind of accuracy. <laughs>